Welcome to Worms and Warriors. We're just about to start a brand new series here. We're going to start playing Ultimate General The Civil War. Now this is a strategy game that's been around for a while, but it's one that's aged really well and is still a great fun to play. It's been a while since I've played it, but I'm excited to get into a campaign here. So this is a mixture of battlefield tactical combat as well as some slightly grander strategy bits and pieces it hasn't got a campaign map as such but if you're new to this i think you'll you'll enjoy it i think you'll like it and it might even make you go out and pick this game up because it's, it's good fun to play i mean i've sunk i don't know i'm not sure about 200 hours into this uh, but like i say it's been a little while since i've played it but let's just before we start i'm just gonna knock the music sound down a bit all right so this is a it's a it's a nice little game this has got it's actually got nice music i do like the music in the background it's just obviously while i'm talking it's a bit off-putting <laughs> I'll try and keep the talk to a minimum. I'm sure if you guys have played this before, you'll know all this already. But I'll, I'll do a little bit of um, kind of explaining what this game is and kind of a few bits and pieces. If I remember them anyway, like I say, it's been a while since I've played this. It's, a, it's an older game, this, but it's good. It is good. So let's go with the campaign. Uh, you've always dreamed of becoming a military officer. A house officer, like divided against itself cannot stand. Yeah. This government cannot endure. So I don't know, maybe I need to turn this down as well. Because <laughs> uh, that was real loud. I don't know how that was on your, on your end, but let's go back. And let's We'll have a little look at this campaign. Let's have, a, let's have a look. So you've always dreamt of becoming a military officer like your father. You feel it is your destiny to serve your nation, earning glory with honor on the battlefield. Okay. So here you go. West Point graduation. You get to choose kind of which side of the war you went into and all these things give you... Uh, which side of uh, kind of military learning you went into more. So tactician, you graduated from West Point, specialising in tactics, learning that reconnaissance is key to an effective flank manoeuvre. Army organisation plus one, reconnaissance plus one, or you'll be a strategist, you've graduated from West Point, specialising in strategy, learning that hard training is crucial for an effective army. Now I like this one, and I think we're going to go with this one. I'll, I'll read logist logistician as well. Um... You've graduated from West Point, specialising in logistics, learning that a war cannot be won without proper supply chain. Oh, that's true enough. <laughs> anyway, so uh, that gives you army organisation plus one, logistics plus one. If you don't know this game, this won't mean much to you. Uh, army organisation plus one or training plus one for strategist and army organisation plus one plus reconnaissance plus one for tactician. Now we're going to go with strategist. Um, Mexican American War. So where did you serve in the Mexican American War? So you're taking it's it's like a role playing game. This you served as an artillery officer in the Northern Mexico campaign. Your battery was positioned perfectly to anchor our defence at the Battle of Buena Vista. Plus two logistics, plus two medicine. Infantry. You served as an infantry officer at the Battle of Monterey. You earned great distinction for your role leading the assault upon the town. So training plus three. Or, and reconnaissance plus one. Or we could have been in the cavalry. You served as a cavalry officer under during Scott's invasion, reconnoitering the road to Mexico City. You helped unmask and defeat Santa Ana's ambush at the Battle of Puebla. Reconnaissance plus three, logistics plus one. Again, I'm going to go with the infantry here. We're going to get train plus three, so it's going to really bump up the training points. And reconnaissance plus one, which obviously is handy as well. Uh, further career, so after the war, you went into business, making a lot of money. You also made friends, so that gives us economy plus three and logistics plus one. Or the army. After the war, you remain in the army, so a professional officer. Rising through the ranks, you became a general of militia in your own home state. So training plus three, again, hammering the training. And army organization plus one. Or we could have gone into politics. After the war, you entered politics. Your sterling reputation and skill at managing men helped you become a United States congressman. Politics plus three. Economy plus one. We're actually going to go with politics. Usually I go with army, but I think we're going to go with politics. And we chose to fight for the Confederacy because we're doing a Confederate campaign. Now, which do we choose here? I mean, I don't, I'm not going to go major general. Like I said, I have not played this game for a long, long time. It gives reputation drop plus 25%, enemy strength plus 15%, gold and recruits minus 10%. So I, I don't think that's what I need to be starting with. We'll just go with the normal Brigadier General in the middle. You're a veteran commander who does not need additional support or assistance of any kind. Yeah. 
a great challenge awaits you and you're up for the fight. Uh, that's probably about me. Colonel, I don't want to do Colonel. Let's go with Brigadier General. And now, <clears throat> I think the game does actually get harder as you get promoted because your character will gain experience and we will become a Major General eventually. And I think the game gets harder, if I remember right. I, I could be mistaken. I, but I think it's got kind of a... like a changing difficulty level as you progress. I could be completely wrong, but I mean, either way, we're going to go with Brigadier General and hope it's not too easy and hope it's not too hard. So, uh, name, let's, we'll just go with Worms, but not like that. Worms, so we are Brigadier General Worms, <laughs> since we are the Worms and Warriors channel here. So we, we're going to start with Politics 3, Economy 1, Medicine 0, Training 4, Army Organization 1, Logistics nothing, and Reconnaissance 1. So we can see underneath here what this gives us. Income, 7.5%. So it's it, on top, like, that's a bonus. So we get an extra because of our pol politics. Uh, discount, 2.5%. So our units are going to be 2.5% cheaper due to our one in economics. Um, veteran costs, minus 10%. That's from our training. So replacing your lost troops with veteran troops is 10% cheaper. Ammo, 0% because we've got nothing in logistics. Uh, recruiting, 7.5%. Uh, I'm not sure. Unless that one was the politics, actually. I'm not sure. But anyway, all our numbers up here correlate to these bonuses down here. Core number one. Now, that's from Army Organization. Enemy info, none. Even though we've got one in reconnaissance, but you get nothing. Uh, we don't need an advisor, I don't think. Let's uh, get started here, then. So, But just before I do, if you are new here, then why not check out the channel anyway? We've been playing a lot of Grand Tactician, the Civil War in this game, which is a, obviously another American Civil War game, but it's very different to this one. Um, I've also been playing Crusader Kings 3 and a host of other games, actually a whole handful of other games, but I've not been playing much other than Grand Tactician, the Civil War as of late, because I love that game. <laughs> well, I kind of love to hate that game. It's, it's an annoying game, but I really do enjoy playing it. Um, but I figured... We'll branch out a little bit and stick this game on and see if any of you guys like that. So if you are new here, if you just stumble across this channel then and you like this sort of content, then go and have a look. And if you like what you see, why not leave a subscribe and check out the other playlists and things that we've got available after you finish watching this video, of course. <laughs> so yeah, uh, so we're going to be Brigadier General Worms. Um, this is our stats here. And let's just click begin and see how this goes. I mean, I, I hope I don't get me butt kicked straight away. I am... A little rusty at this game. Like I say, I have not played this in a long time. Not properly anyway. I did have a quick battle. I played the Battle of Shiloh for an, a, another video for another series that I do, which is called Battles in History. So where on a certain day, I'll pick a battle and basically fight it out on a game. I've played it on this game, and I've done another battle using... Ro not Rome Total War. Um, one of the Total War games. I forget the name now. <laughs> Empire Total War, that's it. I'll play Empire Total War. Okay, anyway, that's enough waffling now. Let's just get started. And I think this kind of kicks you straight into a battle, if I remember right. Yes, it does. General, your first assignment is to capture a small coastal fort at the bank of the Potomac River. So that's obviously the fort there. Um, we can see this is the objective with this flag in there. Uh, if we have a quick look around the map, all this stuff gives you different pros and cons so for example you can move your guys uh, on these buildings and you'll get extra cover um it'll be slower to go over certain terrain and things like that it'll become more apparent as we start playing all right your vanguard must hurry up and eliminate the union batteries whilst the fort is lightly guarded the federals have been alerted and gather forces to block the river passage in front of you so obviously we're gonna have to push over here we can see there's the defensive line. So this is like, like I said, this game's a few years old. I'm not sure, can't remember when exactly it came out, but it's a few years old, but it still, it looks nice. I, I really like it. Nice graphics. Um, so these are our units down here. You can see we're on the field there. Worms, there we are. We've got two brigades of infantry. We've got Kemper and Siegfried, I think that is. Yeah, Siegfried. And then some Carve over here, just 221 men. And we've got some skirmishers out under... Hexma, I think his name is. I, I can't quite see it, and you can't zoom in just yet. So that's our forces. There's not many on the field here. These are brigades, but obviously the tiny brigades, more like uh, regiment size, battalion maybe. So let's go to the next. 
Additionally, enemy regiments have been spotted marching along this road, so the reinforcements are coming along this road. So I guess the aim of the game will be to cross this river nice and quick, engage the enemy, and see if we can stop those reinforcements from reaching the fort, or at least stop some of them. So I like these. I like these little scenes, the little opening bits for the battles and things, and the tactical help, and the arrows on here. I think they look really cool. I like it. Uh, advance fast and gain ground before the fort is heavily reinforced, or else your task will be much harder. The rest of your troops will join you in about half an hour, so we've got more troops coming. That's handy to know. But we're going to have to be quick here, so what we're going to do... I guess once I press, press next, the battle will start. What we're going to do, we're going to knock out skirmishers from one of these brigades, and we're going to send them over this bridge. We're going to also send the cavalry over this bridge and see what we see. There's bound to be some guys here, and I'm sure there'll be defenders here waiting for us. So we'll advance with Hexmar. I think his name's Hexmar. We'll, we'll advance with these skirmishers um, and take it from there. So just before we start here, our assault troops are moving up. Okay, so let we can check these guys out. So we've got uh, Siegfried, 1st Corps, 1st Division. Uh, they're armed with Springfield muskets, 1842 muskets. So pretty outdated tech. And again, Springfield muskets for the other guys as well. Our cavalry is armed with Palmetto M1842 54 lock pistol. I mean, probably crap, I would imagine. <laughs> uh, the skirmish guys. Hexama. Hexama? Uh, they've got Springfield 1855 rifle muskets, so they're a bit better. Okay, so... All right, so I've just paused it here. We're going to send our guys forward. We're going to send the cav this way. And we're going to detach some skirmishers from... No, not run. Skirmishers from Siegfried's Brigade. All right, so let's get started here. We're going to have to be really careful. We're going to have to keep an eye out where the enemy is. And there we are, we've spotted them. Two lots of skirmish guys. I want to get him over there. Have spotted those dudes. Okay. All right, that's nice. So let's keep them busy. Let's press over this river. Double time, boys. Oh! I forgot about those guys. <laughs> you can tell I'm a little rusty with the game, that's for sure. I thought the cavalry would have done better against the skirmishers, but never mind. I suspect our calves going to flee since we're not actually killing any of those guys. Okay, let's advance. Nice and quick, if you please, boys. Okay, I think... It's our cavalry breaking or are they breaking? I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, so our skirmishers are pushing their guys back. 
Ja, ah, det står Harios her. Okay. So those boys are pushing down here for a fight. Second Ohio as well, okay. This is the reinforcements on the road. Um, the Yankees seem determined to defend the fort. We've got reinforcements and supplies. Use them wisely, General. Yep. Get rid of these skirmishers here, which are in our way. So these guys were fighting here. We're keeping them out of the fort, and that's perfect. Well, not perfect, maybe, but good. <laughs> Okay, so those skirmishers are done for, they're routed, they no longer have an icon. Sent the first Ohio Scotland back. Now can we wreck the second Ohio here with stop them going into the fort altogether? That would be nice. I didn't really want them charging in, I just wanted to fire. <laughs> okay. Damn it. Looks like our car is done for. We're going to use our fresh troops once they get across here to storm that fort. Uh, the little grey line is the supply line, so as you're using ammunition, that goes down, obviously. We've got a supply wagon coming here, so it's going to fill that back up. We're going to get these three brigades to attack the fort. See how that goes. See the terrains getting scarred up with the artillery fire, it's pretty cool.
All right. Let's just go for it. A lot of casualties getting into this fort, but that's inevitable, really, to be honest. And Bernie's boys are in. Let's get them in there. Let the butchery commence. We are flanked with artillery up here. That sucks, obviously. Bring the sick free then. Hopefully, take out those guns or need help with that. Oof, artillery fire decimating our men. It says we've secured the fort. I wouldn't go that far. Pushed out. Damn it. Oop, the second Ohio has surrendered. Excellent. Guns are absolutely destroying us. Looks like the third Ohio is fleeing as well. Allen is like just held on. Come on, Siegfried, get these guns took out. <laughs> it's a bit of a bloodbath, but, uh, you know. Ah, we've routed the guns at least, thank Christ. Let's get our supplies into the fort. Cavalry, okay. Kemp is still fighting over there. Don't quite understand how as we're flanked here. Let's just get these guys taken out. Pretty grim fight. Seemed like it was going to be a small little fight, but uh, these things can escalate pretty quickly in this game. resupplying sick feet skirmishes just out there keeping the Ohio guys busy
I'm sending Bernie skirmishes out just to see if we can hit battery A. Ohio boys are still fighting here, 138 men left in the field. See if we can finish these guys with a charge. Both sides exhausted and almost out of ammunition. Congratulations, you secured the fort. Way! The fort has served our purposes for some time and has prevented enemy supply ships from passing this section of the river. But now the Union is on the offensive. Ironclad's approach to bombard us. Ooh. Federal infantry has disembarked west of the fort and is moving to attack. Uh, we've called for help and more troops will arrive shortly to support the defence. It is advised to deploy some skirmishers along the ridge west of the fort to delay the Yankee advance. All right. We need to buy some time for our fort's batteries to counter fire and disable the ironclads. General, hold your ground at all costs. We must prove today that the rebellion has a strong foundation and that we will fight for every inch of southern soil. All right. There's the ironclads. We've got two gun batteries. So we've got the USS Anacosta and Thomas Freeborn. Cool. Um, now, I wanted us to put skirmishers up, but it's taken our skirmishers away. Our actual skirmishing unit. Um, okay. Well, let's send some skirmishers. We haven't... I mean, our brigades are tiny here. I'm going to send a couple of companies out. I'm going to move secret off there. I think the attack's going to come from this section, so we'll move him out of the defense. We can always put him back in if we need to. So they're concentrating on Anacostia with their fire, which is fine. Here they come. Grant, Terry, Burnham. Oh, and some, some of their skirmishes. Way more than us. <laughs> uh, Alright, so we already lost 11 men there. I think we're best off falling back a little. Realistically, we're not going to do too much with the skirmishes. Quickly mobilise forces to defend the fort. Yeah, okay. Oh, here's our cav, but... You know, what the heck am I going to do with those dudes? Is that it? <laughs> 100 cavalrymen. All right. I want to stick Bernie's guys in these buildings. Doing doing pretty well with the ironclads there. Some guns and the Haskell. Oh, 
There's a lot of Yankees here. <laughs> Not many of us. Uh, Captain Sam Cabell is wounded. Oh, cable? Cabell? I'm not sure how you would say that. Alright, so Bernie's boys are now opening up on the flank of them advancing, but uh, Terry's brigade is coming at us. Is that there are a lot of troops here. We could have done with an extra brigade or two, really. <laughs> Our last reserves have come. Yay! Is that it? One brigade. Okay. <laughs> Ah, some more. Canfield. Excellent. I want to see if we can get Allen firing on their flank. Artillery's now switched to the infantry, which makes sense, I guess. Actually, I'm going to get Cabell to fire on the, art on the, on the ship still. Excellent. Sturm has routed. Some really grim fighting here. Kemp is holding off Grant's brigade. Alan nice back here, holding off Brooke from the attack. Perfect. Tough fight. They're putting up a hell of a fight here.
looks like Grant's brigade has reformed and is pulling forward. I don't know if this is uh, the Grant or if it's just our Grant. <laughs> Done okay here. I mean, casualties are reasonably high, but uh, on both sides, tough fight. I've enjoyed the fight so far. Come on, Canfield, let loose. Well, that could have gone better. <laughs> Thomas Freeborn still on 52. And morale's doing okay. Good old General Worms keeping everyone happy. These guys fire or not? Doesn't see my cropper and them are firing. Not sure how wise that was. Probably not at all. There's only 97 of them left. They've actually routed them. Okay, excellent. I could capture their supplies. Charge their guns, causing them all sorts of problems, yeah? I think they're going to capture the supplies back. Well, no. Be nice if we could target one gun onto the infantry and the other ones onto the onto the ships. Yeah, uh, they've got them back. I thought they might. I'm not sure if this car will make it through the fight, but uh, at least it kept those guns busy. So Burnham's are just about done as well. Brooks has reformed. Hand fighting going on. Uh, our cavalry is gone. Okay, never mind. Come 
on, Alan. Ooh. Oh, we've taken out the, the ships now. Excellent, but we're almost out of ammo with the guns. Ah, Alan's managed to hold firm. Nicely done, son. Nicely done indeed. 48 minutes left in the scenario. That's game minutes, not real minutes. In case you were thinking with horror, this video still had that long ago. And Terry's routed, and I'll say that's probably that. They're still fighting hard on that left Yankee flank. Still going. Still dreaming of victory. Fire, can't field. Yeah, nice. Ah, I've forgotten about our supplies. Price Burnham still in the field, just 134 men under arms. Bernie Skirmish has done a nice job here as well. 170 kills, only 42 deaths. Nicely done. Burnham's Brigade now looks more like a skirmisher unit with 99 men left. Dishing out some supplies here for the artillery. Let's get this on double time. He's away. Some supplies for these guys. Fifteen minutes left in the scenario. Launch a little counter attack with six people, probably a waste of men. Three hundred and eighty-one kills for Merritt, two hundred and six for Cabell, who was of course firing at the ships for much longer. And there we are. The fight is over. We've managed to get a nice victory here. Um, we had 3,200 men with 221 cavalry as well. We had 10 guns. They had 20 guns, 5,642 infantry for them. Casualties of 3,700. So the casualty numbers in this game are not usually very realistic, but it's still, it's a fun game to play. So what else do we do? We've held all these things. The units here, I mean, plenty. Who got the most kills? Kemper with 827. They only also lost 480, though. 
with 157 left in the field for Kemp. Okay, so that's Canfield, three, uh, 608. 306 left in the field. He only lost 190. So that was well done. Uh, Kemp, I got himself promoted to Lieutenant Colonel. Uh, Cabell is wounded. And we captured a little handful of Springfield 1855s, a few six pounder field guns, uh, some palmettos. I'll rescue today our, our guys. Uh, our guys' weapons. That was the calves' weapons that we managed to recover. And we rescued 800 Springfield 1842s and captured another 692. So that's not bad. Let's have a look here. So like I was saying, this game is a mixture of campaign and strategy up to a point. So we've gotten the Civil War campaign medal. Uh, nice. We've exchanged 294 prisoners for 437 additional recruits. So we're going to have, we got $47,100 to spend, one career point. Our reputation increased by three, and we've got 3,000 new recruits. Okay, so let's just click accept. We can see this is our our army here. Look, so we are Worms in charge of the First Corps, Brigadier General Worms, First Corps. And we've got Tom Preston, Colonel Tom Preston, in charge of our First Division. You can see we've got a career point to give. We'll do that in a minute. So that's Siegfried from the battlefield. 419 men left there. This is their experience. As that goes up, you can add new perks on. Um, this is the rank of Siegfried. He's a major. I mean, again, obviously a major would never usually command a brigade, but, you know, that's where we are. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Alfred Kemper in charge of this brigade, who's only got 157 men left in, so we will need to add some more troops in. Remember, we had a discount for veterans, so you can choose veteran or rookie troops. Veterans cost more, but keep up the experience of the unit whereas if you add rookies if we just have a look that experience bar goes right down and so do the so do their skills but they're much cheaper but veterans you can see don't do that so veterans will maintain the integrity of the unit in terms of their experience and maintain the experience overall but in terms of cost, so if we fill that up to full, so 1,500 men, that will cost us $40,000 plus, obviously, 1,300 recruits. If we did rookies instead, you would lose all this, but it would cost you nothing. So it's one of them things. <laughs> sometimes you have to. Sometimes you have to use some rookies and sometimes veterans. Sometimes you have to use just rookies or you have small um, units that are highly specialized. Okay, so career, we've got an extra point to add on. Medicine, that's a good one. So you get some, some of your guys back. If you add a point on this, an extra percentage will come back. Uh, instead of being dead, they'll be kind of uh, dead or wounded. They'll be available as alive. <laughs> Logistics gets you more ammunition, training. Then we're on force. That's pretty good. Uh, but I'm actually going to stick this into logistics. Gives a 10% additional ammunition. We've got, a, we've got Colonel Bernie here. Spare commander. These dudes are all available to hire. Well, hire. You know, you know what I mean. Put them in. <laughs> These are the weapons we have available. So we've got 1,497 Springfield 1842s, 1855 Springfield rifles. We've got 149, but we can also buy more. So we can buy Mississippi rifles. We can buy the Palmetto or uh, musket, which is slightly better than the Springfield musket. Uh, and there's obviously other weapons available that we can have as we go through. Enfield rifles, for example, more Springfields, but only 63, so they're quite low numbers. But um, the Mississippi rifle is pretty decent, and we can pick up a substantial number of those, but they cost $17 each. But for now, let's leave this where it is. Um, we'll build up these forces in the next episode and then fight the next scenario. I hope you enjoyed this very first episode of this series. And if you want to see more, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment. Let me know what you thought of it. Um, are, you, do you, are you enjoying this kind of content? Which, I mean, I hope you are. Uh, I certainly enjoyed playing it. It was, like I say, I'm a bit rusty at the game, but I'll probably get better at it as we go on. I'm sure I will. But anyway, let me know what you thought of it. Leave a subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Ta-ra for now.